This video looks at resistance tests on lighting circuits. Focusing on one-way and two-way lighting with a three-plate system is easy to adapt for use on a two-plate system. Understanding the testing by following this method will give the operative the confidence that they are testing correctly and advanced knowledge of what the R1 plus R2 tests should be. Some frequent and recent questions have asked things like what resistance readings should I expect with a lighting circuit? How can I calculate R1 plus R2 and know that my measurement is correct? Every lighting circuit that I work on is different. How do I know if the test results are right or wrong? And what am I actually measuring? Which wires are under test? To help us to understand where the resistance readings come from and what we are measuring, we will look first at a one-way lighting circuit with cable lengths as shown, 10 metres from the consumer unit to the ceiling rows and 5 metres from the ceiling rows to the light switch. Then we'll take a look at the two-way lighting circuit, the same cable lengths as before but now with an extra 7 metres between the two switches. In this video we will use data from the on-site guide, table I1 on page 218. The same data is also available in Guidance Note 3, Appendix B. We've used the data for single runs of conductor, one-way runs, to make calculating easier. The single run figures for 1mm and 1.5mm cable are highlighted here. The figures in the table are quoted in milliohms, but we need to know the ohms, since ohms is what our test meters will display. Using single, 1 mm conductor as an example, we want to calculate the resistance of a 10 meter length and to show the answer in ohms. To do this, multiply the length by the given milliohms and divide by 1000. In our case, 181 milliohms becomes 0 0.181 ohms rounded to 0 0.18. If we put the lengths and resistance into a table, this is what we'll have in ohms. We've said that in this video, the lengths of the cables will be as follows. The switch wires from the ceiling rows to the switch will be 5 metres. The length of the strapper cables in the two-way circuit will be 7 metres between switches. And the line and neutral loop cable from the consumer unit to the ceiling rows is 10 metres. It's then very easy to calculate the resistance of each conductor as shown. In this video, will show any earth or CPC cable as a solid green colour to make it easier to display. And conductors that are not under test will be shown as a solid colour, whilst those being tested will be shown as dotted with white as displayed here. Three cables will be used in the drawings. Cable 1 is the loop cable from the consumer unit to the ceiling rows in 1.5 by 1mm twin and earth. Cable 2 is also 1.5 by 1mm twin and earth, and this is the switch cable. Notice that the blue conductor has brown sleeving over the end to signify that at some point this conductor will have 230 volts or more on it. And cable 3 is 1mm 3 core plus earth strapper cable for use between the two switches. And again, in keeping with good working practice, the black and grey are both marked with brown sleeving. Shown here is the basic one-way lighting circuit using the three-plate method. Shown is cable number one, the 10 meter loop cable from the CU to the ceiling rows. And cable two, the five meter switch cable between the ceiling rows and the light switch. We should begin with testing continuity between the consumer unit and the ceiling rows. Not all books will show this test, but I always do this first since if this bit is not right then nothing else is going to work as it should. To set up the test we first carry out a safe isolation procedure and lock off. Remember if the circuit is still energised you will find out first. We should remove the line, neutral and earth or CPC conductors from their connections in the consumer unit. The free ends of the line and CPC should be linked together in the consumer unit, either by 
a crocodile clip lead, wagos or similar. Then test for continuity of the line and CPC at the ceiling rows. Let's look at this. The low ohms test will be between the live loop terminal in the ceiling rows and the earth stud in the ceiling rows. We'll be testing the resistance of cable number one and if the meter shows a satisfactory and low enough resistance reading we can say that continuity has been proved. But what is a low enough reading? If we use the conductor resistance table that we created earlier, we can work this out. Make sure that you've converted the readings from milliohms to ohms. Here are the values that we should expect. 10 meters of 1.5 millimeter cable is 0 0.12 ohms, and 10 meters of 1 millimeter cable is 0 0.18 ohms. Thinner cable, higher resistance. The total for the two is 0 0.3 ohms. The dotted lines show the two cables under test, from the live loop terminal to the consumer unit on the brown conductor, through the link to the CPC and back to the earth terminal on the CPC. In this case we have a reading of 0 0.3 ohms as expected and good continuity is confirmed. The switch position will make no difference to the readings. It will always read continuity, which is 0 0.3 ohms in this case. This is a permanently energized part of the circuit. Now we can test continuity from the consumer unit to the light switch. And we will find R1 plus R2 at the same time. You will need the value of R1 plus R2 for the test certificate. We should leave one test probe on the earth terminal and put the other probe on the switch block, the outside block of two holes. Now we're testing cable number two from the red probe along the blue switch conductor through the switch and back along the brown switch wire. Then through the middle live loop terminal and along the brown in cable number one to the consumer unit, along the link to the earth conductor and back to the earth terminal along cable number one. If the meter displays an acceptable reading, continuity is proved, and this is also the R1 plus R2 reading for this circuit. And here are the readings that we should expect. In this case, about 0 0.42 ohms. Don't worry if your readings are very slightly different to your calculations. As long as your measured values are within a couple of digits, that's okay. And with practice, you'll know when you have a wrong number. If your meter returns a very high reading, the meter maximum, or OL as my meter displays, suspect that the light switch is in the off position. It shows that there is no continuity path for the test current. Simply operate the light switch and all should be OK when you retest. We now need to prove the continuity of the earth cable or CPC that goes from the ceiling rows to the light switch. Even if this wire is unused, it may be used in the future and we need to know that it's connected. To do this test, we must carry out the test at the light switch. On low ohms, test between the common terminal of the switch to the earth terminal in the switch. Continuity of CPC to the switch is confirmed if the meter returns a valid low ohms reading. If a high reading or OL is returned, check that you are on the common terminal of the switch. And what resistance reading should we expect? Let's go back to our table. And here is the target resistance. And now is the turn of the neutral. Testing neutral continuity from the consumer unit to the ceiling rows. Reposition the link at the consumer unit to connect the earth conductor to the neutral conductor. Then test on low ohms between the earth terminal and the neutral block, both at the ceiling rows. This will test along cable number one. If you have a high reading, OL for instance, check that you've actually changed the position of the link. Now we can move on to two-way lighting. Very similar to one-way switching and still very easy. Ensure that you've carried out safe isolation and lock off before commencing. This looks a little more complicated, but stick with it. The first test is the same as the one-way lighting test. Prove continuity from the consumer unit to the ceiling rows. Link the line and earth conductors at the CU and test at the ceiling rows 
between the live loop block and the earth terminal. Now prove continuity to the switches. This time, test at the ceiling rows between the two hole switch block and the earth terminal. In the arrangement shown, the meter will read over limit or OL. There is no continuity. Look at what's happened. The switches are in the wrong position to allow continuity. They are in the light off position, and we need to have one of the switches in the on position. The white dotted lines show that only part of this circuit is included in the testing. Now we've operated the left hand light switch to simulate a lights on scenario, and we have continuity from the switch block along the blue switch wire to the first switch, through the switch to the black wire and on to the second switch, through switch two onto the brown and back to switch number one. At switch number one, we go along another brown wire back to the ceiling rows, out of the ceiling rows on a brown wire again to the link at the consumer unit, from the link along the earth and back to the earth terminal at the ceiling rows. The test current has completed a path around the circuit and continuity is proved. And this is also R1 plus R2 for the test certificate. If we now operated the second switch, we would lose continuity. And to get continuity back, we should operate the first switch again. On off, on off. And the sort of readings that we should expect are shown here. Pause the video and make sure that you understand. Now we must prove the continuity of the CPC to the switches. This must be carried out at the furthest switch, the end of the line. Follow the route of the test current along the dotted conductors, from the red probe through the circuit and back to the black test probe. What resistance reading would you find acceptable? And if you get an open circuit reading, an OL, operate just one of the switches and you will get a reading if you've made the right connections. And finally, the neutral continuity, just as before. Move the link at the consumer unit to the ends of the neutral and CPC wires. Test for low ohms at the ceiling rows between the neutral block and the earth terminal. One-way switching, two-way switching, or even intermediate switching. Draw what you have and decide which conductors will be under test. Using a little table as shown in the video, if you know the length, you can calculate the resistance. If you know the resistance of each part, you can calculate R1 plus R2. The testing sequence is easy. Prove continuity from the consumer unit to the ceiling rows. Then prove to the switch and record this as R1 plus R2. For two-way lighting, test to the furthest switch for R1 plus R2. Now prove that the earth or CPC from the ceiling rows is continuous. And finally, prove that the neutral is continuous. And always write things down as you go along. I've seen so many people commit numbers to memory only to start testing all over again because they've forgotten the first few numbers. If you write it down, all you have to do is remember where you wrote it. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are always adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.